is up, Ramsey Orchestra? So, it is May 1st, 2020. We've only got about three weeks left or so, maybe three and a half weeks left of this non-traditional instruction. Um, today, uh, we are gonna be talking about professional musicians. Um, I kinda had a hard time thinking about what I could do um, to be able to talk about professional musicians in this setting. Um, because I'm not one, I'm your teacher. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna talk about how they got there. I'm gonna talk about um, what I know with my education and my experience, um, how professional musicians get to where they are. Uh, every professional musician's journey is different. It's very, very different. Different work hours, different connections, different locations. I'm gonna talk about how they got to where they are today and just kind of like a general what I know as to what it takes to be able to be a professional musician. So on today's agenda, uh, we've got, I wish I wanna go ahead and let you guys know, the last day for you guys is May 27th. The last video that I'm gonna submit for you guys is May 22nd, which is the week before. So, finishing out the school year. Based upon what you guys voted for our learning topics, we're gonna be doing next week is gonna be spent on how string instruments are made. So how each instrument, violin, viola, cello, bass are made, okay? The week after that, we're gonna be talking about repairs and how we can be able to repair our instruments and what repairs look like for string players. They're gonna look different than band instruments, obviously, because they're made different. Because that might be, that's a career. That might be a career that some of you might be interested in how to repair string instruments, because there are people who repair, repair string instruments make pretty good money. And then the last week, we are gonna do symphony orchestras. Uh, and some of you, a lot of you guys talked about um, in the vote that you wanted to learn about band and choir. So I might be able to implement the band and choir into the symphony orchestra so we can learn those two subjects together at the same time simultaneously. Because you, you have to have a symphony and orchestra with band and orchestra, de definitely. There is a lot of music that has choir, band and orchestra all performing together. That's got some pretty incredible music. A lot of movies, soundtracks, they are full band orchestra choir all together. Now, we are going to talk about student awards. I'm going to create a survey for you guys, and you are going to vote between May 4th through May 15th, and I'm going to announce the winners of our awards on May 22nd. For student of the month, for the month of May, since this is our last month of our, this school year, I'm going to allow you guys to vote up to three people for student of the month okay the reason why is because this is the last one and if you wanted to be nominated for student of the month for this school year this is your last chance and then next year it's all brand new so anyone who won this year will be eligible to win again next year now for our awards and all of these nominations will be up to three people but only one person can win each award and these will be the ones that you will get to vote for so outstanding 6th, 7th, and 8th grader are individual awards that are given to orchestra students who completely encompass orchestra. They practice, they have really good attendance, they show up to concerts, they are great leaders, and they just care a lot about our program. So that would be somebody who would be considered an outstanding 6th, 7th, 8th grader. Next is best attitude. So someone who comes in every day and just has a positive attitude. Next is our most improved musician. Uh, someone in our orchestra who may have switched instruments in the middle of the year or joined late in the year and has just grown immensely in, on their instrument and in their section. So that would be somebody that you could think about who would be considered for most improved musician. And lastly is unsung hero. So this will be an award for someone who that doesn't necessarily meet being an outstanding student, but is someone who works very hard for our orchestra program and someone who dedicates a lot of time and a lot of practicing. Uh, and, it, and either of these awards, Outstanding and Unsung Hero, doesn't have to be a section leader. It can be anyone in the orchestra. And it does, it can, if you've won Student of the Month, this does not apply to that. You are able to be nominated for Outstanding Student for the year. The awards for that will be trophies that will be personalized with your name and this, the school year Ramsey Orchestra and what the award is for. And I'll be mailing those out to you guys as soon as they come in. Um, once I have the results and I have announced them, I will be able to put the order in and I'll have them sent straight to you. 
The next few awards that are not ones you'll be voted for, these people will automatically get these awards for doing this this year, is All County. Now sixth grade, I know that you guys did not get to have your All County, um, so you, I will not be able to get you guys a trophy just because the event didn't happen and that was completely out of your control, okay? In eighth grade, uh, you guys who are in All County will get your award. And then Solon Ensemble, if you received a distinguished rating, you will receive a medal and a certificate. And then if you were, got a proficient rating, you will receive a certificate. We will recognize students who were a part of the Louisville Youth Orchestra. So I think that kind of wraps up everything for our agenda for the day. So now let's kind of break into our lesson. Let's talk about professional musicians and how they got there. Now, a lot of the professional musicians you see play online, uh, on YouTube, uh, you see live, you saw the Louisville Orchestra. A lot of those people started playing when they're between the ages of 3 and 11. Uh, 10 and 11, is, that's about your all's age when you all started, uh, most of you. But some of you could have started when you were 6 or you could have been playing since you were three. A lot of these musicians have been playing at a young age because the younger you are, the more your brain absorbs and the more you can become comfortable doing things a lot quicker. So whenever these kids started playing, a lot of times they started taking private lessons one-on-one -on -one with an instructor, with someone who has been playing that instrument for a very, very long time, who then themselves are a professional musician in a lot of sense. Uh, and these students take lessons with them at a young age and they're able to work with them and make them better, give them music to work on specifically that they'll be able to succeed at and not just in a classroom setting like how we play because some of our music we play is very, very easy for some of you. Bass players, your music can be pretty easy sometimes. So being in private lessons, you're able to be challenged in ways that I can't really challenge you. They played in their school orchestra. Okay, they didn't become professional musicians and just play on the side. They played in their school orchestra. They participated in community ensembles. So for you guys, that could be like the Louisville Youth Orchestra that you have to audition for. Being a part of the Louisville Youth Orchestra is a great way for you to be able to meet new people, see people you don't play with every day, like on your instrument. Uh, having a different conductor, you'd have a different teacher. It wouldn't be me. You'd have a different perspective of a different conductor and how they do things, how they were in rehearsals. Um, and also, these students participated in Solon Ensemble, they participated in All County, they participated in every opportunity that was given to them to be able to achieve what they wanted. They spent a ton of hours practicing. Hey, can you rewind that and tell them that one more time? They spent a ton of hours practicing. They spent so much time on their instruments. They sacrificed hanging out with friends. They sacrificed spending time on their cell phones, spending time on TikTok. They used their time to get better at their craft because they understood that they had a talent and it was something that they loved and something they cared about that made them want to do that for the rest of their lives. Quick story, whenever I was in sixth grade, I almost didn't make it into middle school. Like I almost did not pass the fifth grade. I had three U's on my report card. I don't even know how I passed. Uh, I was going through a hard time and it was just a lot for me. Transitioning middle school was not easy for me. It was very hard, but as soon as I got a trumpet in my hand, everything changed. Um, I found a passion and I found something I really cared about. And it was something that really gave me life and I mean yeah it, it, it I mean it has not made me perfect <laughs> in the least uh, but it, it's gave me something that I care about because a lot of times guys you'll learn a life worth living is one that you're really passionate about it's really important that you do th something with your life that is gonna make a difference to not only you but the people you surround yourself with so you wanna make sure that whatever profession you choose, it's something you care about. Don't do it for the money. Money comes and goes. Knowing that you're making a difference just because you care so much about what you do, that's all that matters. Like me being your teacher is the only career that I could imagine having. If I were to be anything else, I guess I could be a cop. So after musicians have performed in their middle school orchestra or their high school orchestra, done all county, they've all, they've auditioned for things, they've done solo and ensemble, they perform, 
uh, solos at nursing homes for their parents, for their grandparents, family gatherings. I mean, they, they're spending as much time as possible as they can on their instruments to make themselves better because they know that's what they want to do. They'll then have to apply for colleges. Um, if, they, if you want to be a professional musician, you have to apply to go to college. Um, it's not something really that you can be able to just go out and do. Now, some people can if you're good enough and you have the personality to be able to work, network well with others. Networking meaning that you build relationships in a specific career. So say I work at McDonald's, someone who works in the drive-thru and I eventually want to become a manager. The way you move up that ladder, you have to be able to have a good relationship with your boss to be able to get those opportunities. So if someone graduates high school and they're just really ridiculously good at their instrument and, and they have a great personality and they're really outgoing, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for them to be able to find a job. But if it's someone who, you know, doesn't have a great rapport with people or doesn't really uh, have a great relationship with people, it's going to be harder for them to find a job. So doing a four-year degree will be able to get you trained on your instrument and be able to build relationships with all kinds of different people because when you go to a music school, you come into contact with all kinds of different musicians. Uh, you're not only with orchestra, you're with band and choir, guitar, elementary music majors, people who are wanting to fo only focus on elementary education. You've got music therapy, you've got music technology, music education that I took. Uh, it's a lot. You have a lot of options. So you're going to come in, in contact with a lot of people that are going to need, you never know. Like, for example, I hired a saxophone quartet to play at my wedding. Uh, there were friends that I went to college with and they performed at competitions and I asked them to play and they got paid for that. So they had practiced a lot together as a quartet, quartet meaning four, group and four people in the group. So they got hired on to be able to perform because they practice so much. Then they have to audition to be able to go to a school uh, for music because if you're going to get a music degree a lot of times they'll give you a scholarship to be able to go to school there. So you practice, 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 you get pick out some music, you learn scales uh, and you'll have probably have to sight read some music but you go and you auditioned and granted now thank guys you're a senior in high school you've been playing since fifth sixth grade maybe before that so you've got tons of time to prepare if music is something you really care about and something you want to pursue so you but you have to audition in front of the professors at the university you want to go to and they'll call you or they'll eat, send you a letter and let you know if you get accepted or not um, and guys musicians deal with rejection a lot a lot they have to People, musicians fail, they're gonna fail, but how they bounce back from it decides who they are as a person and who they're gonna let themselves become. So after they they get accepted into that college, they go into it just like a regular freshman. Um, a lot of times, guys, uh, as a music major, you have, to take, you have to take a lot of classes. So you have to take music theory, music reading, piano, voice. You have to learn all the string instruments. You have to learn all the band instruments, music technology, percussion. I mean, you have to learn everything. And you spend a lot of time, I'm talking like four hours of practice a day. If you're a music major and you're not spending at least three to four hours on your instruments outside of rehearsal, you're not spending enough time on your instrument. That or you're just really good. But a lot of times people who are really good only got there by practicing. Think about that. Then, after they graduate with a four-year degree, they can go and get a master's degree, which is um, just a one to two year degree that is a step up. So a four-year degree is a bachelor's degree. A master's degree is a step higher than that, which uh, you can get in performance as well. Now, what some people will do is they'll get a degree in music education, a bachelor's degree, and then get a master's degree in performance, because then they'll use that degree to be able to teach college level. Uh, so if you wanted to be able to teach college, a lot of times they require you to have a master's degree at least. Um, and teaching used to be that way. They want you to have a master's degree and people will get that uh, as just to have, just to gain more experience in on their instrument and be able to network more and be able to just learn more about their instrument, about themselves and how to get better. 
Now, some of these professional musicians became famous by having groups. So, Simply Three, um, Two Set Violin, um, Two Cellos. Those were ensembles that were created by those people and they were professional musicians, but they're only professional musicians, famous professional musicians because of creating those groups. So, sometimes creating a group, like when you're in middle school, uh, like a duet, if you find another violin player or, another, or a cello player that you want to create an ensemble with, you guys can practice together all the time. And if you go to, go through high school together um, and you practice, practice, notice I'm saying practicing a lot because I'm trying to re reiterate something to you. Being able to have those ensembles and people you can rely on and perform with and c building those relationships, being able to travel to different countries and perform, like that's awesome. Uh, but that can only happen by you practicing and working hard. Now, to be able to be in a symphony orchestra, for example, they have to audition for for the director or for the people who sponsor that ensemble uh, to be able to pay the musicians, but they have to audition to be in that group. So the more you audition, the better at it you become. So if you get really, really nervous when you go into an audition, say you go into All County right now and you're like, oh, and you don't do well in your audition, the only way you get better at it is by going back and doing it again and again and again and again and just performing as much as you possibly can because then it starts to become fun. It starts to become something that you enjoy and not something you become scared of. So you have to audition. Anytime you, as a professional musician, for you to get a job, you have to audition every single time. There are no other options. You have to audition. You can get there a lot of times by networking to get a job. But a lot of times they want to hear you play. They want to know you know how to play. So, but that's how they get those jobs and then they keep them. They'll get those chairs and yeah, they have to usually, they have to re-audition every single year so that way they can be able to keep their chair or keep their placement and they can get paid for what they do. Guys, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. So don't forget on Monday, voting is gonna start for your awards and for the May student of the month and they're gonna run for two weeks and then on May 22nd I'm gonna announce who wins the school year awards and who is our student of the month for the month of May. Be sure to comment what you learned in this video. Hopefully you learned something new about what it's gonna to take to become a professional musician so get your check-in for the day and I will see you next week. I love you guys and I hope you all are taking care of yourselves.